I've said this before, and I'll say it till the day I die. Video game success depends on music greatly. It's a symbiotic relationship that depends on one another to succeed. However, there is a unique and rather special relationship between hip hop and video games. This is because sampling is a huge part of hip hop, if not its entire basis. In this video, I'll go over the brief history between hip hop, sampling, and video games. And then I'll showcase many examples of how video game music and sound effects have been sampled throughout the history of hip hop. As a caveat, I wanna say, I'm not a hip hop expert, but I am a musician. And I've been a hip hop listener ever since I first played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater back in the late 90s. Hip hop stuck with me after listening to NWA's Express Yourself for the first time on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 all those years ago as I was wrecking shit in Alcatraz and puking my brains out because of motion sickness. That's a true story. This is how many young children got into hip hop back in the day if they weren't exposed to hip hop through any other medium. Ask any hip hop fan who's my age, between the ages of 25 and 30, and I can assure you that at least a third of them will say they got into the genre thanks to video games. First, to understand sampling, we have to understand the history behind it. We have to understand where it probably drew inspiration from. And the first instance of this kind of practice was documented way back in the 1940s as something called music concrete. Hey yo, what the fuck? Or in the less pretentious way, music concrete. Music concrete consisted of utilizing recorded sounds as the basis for the creation of new musical pieces. These recorded sounds were from a variety of sources. They can be from musical instruments, they can be human voices, hell, they can even be birds chirping. It can be sounds from around your environment. The theory behind this practice was mainly developed by Pierre Schaeffer. Schaeffer. Schaeffer? Schaeffer? I don't know, some European yeah. are out there. Although it wasn't until the 1970s with the invention of keyboard electronic instruments that were able to reproduce recorded sounds that sampling really began to gain popularity. Once these instruments became more affordable, music producers began sampling funk and soul records from the past decade to create beats, melodies, rhythms, and backing tracks for what would then become the basis of hip hop. A lot of inspiration for sampling stems from the origin of blues and rock, which were actually born from the repurpose of other genres of music, and this repurpose followed through with hip hop. From its inception up until the early 90s, sampling was unmarked territory. It was the wild west. There were absolutely no laws to this whole game. Everything from James Brown to Bob Marley songs were sampled in the early days of hip hop. It wasn't until 1989 that the golden age of sampling kinda was put on hold. The famous hip hop group De La Soul were sued by the band The Turtles. You probably heard one of their songs. Imagine me and you, I do. It's that mainstream kind of music. Although with this particular case, the settlement was handled outside of court, but it did leave a very bad taste on hip hop and the art of sampling. After this, sampling took even a bigger hit in the form of Gilbert O'Sullivan suing Biz Marquis after he had sampled his song Alone Again, naturally. However, this time it was kind of different. O'Sullivan actually forced Biz Marquis' label to recall the album from store shelves and denying them from re-releasing it until the sample was removed from one of the tracks. This completely changed the art of sampling and it actually made sampling so inaccessible 
both legally and financially that nowadays you only ever hear samples in the music of either well-established or very successful hip-hop artists. With the increasing popularity of video games in the 80s and 90s, alongside hip-hop, came the opportunity to draw inspiration from the medium for the genre. Although the legality of sampling video game music remains as complicated as the legality of sampling older records, there have been many instances in which hip-hop artists have used, transformed, and reused video game music and sound effects for its catchy melodies. One of the most sampled video game franchises of all time probably has to be the Mario franchise with its many songs being so easily identifiable. Everything from the Super Mario Bros theme song to Super Mario 64's file select song and even Star Road's theme have been sampled. We have to thank Koji Kondo for the creation of these sampling classics and many more. Artists such as Currency, Coco Brothers, Dram, and even Drake have all sampled famous plumbers theme songs throughout its history. More video games from the 90s were further sampled in modern hip-hop. The more famous game from this decade that was thoroughly sampled in modern hip-hop was Chrono Trigger. Wiz Khalifa's track Never Been and Dom Kennedy's Locals Only actually both sample what is known to be one of the best RPGs of all time. In Dom's track, the theme from Chrono Trigger sampled was Secret of the Forest, which helped make Dom's track sound a lot more mellow and actually made it easier for the beat to carry the rhythm with a little bit of a swing, so to speak. Every night, I got so many thoughts and I got so much to write. And that right there is the story of my life. Can't sit and complain. Another 90s game that has been heavily sampled is Pokemon Blue and Red. The 8-bit soundtrack to the first entry of the Pokemon series has lent itself to be an easy target for sampling mainly because the themes are pretty catchy and kind of simplistic. Here, for example, in the Suicide Boys track called Ugly, you can hear the faint theme for Lavender Town. The creepy undertone of the theme adds to the track's aggressiveness and mystique. There are also more underground examples of Pokemon Red Blue Town themes being sampled. This track by Billy Marchiafava, 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 yo man, all these rappers' names are so fucking difficult to pronounce nowadays, called Cyberthought, samples Cerulean City and creates a very upbeat and fun track to listen to. Posted in the back, hey, saw on my lap, hey, said, Billy, damn, so cold, I'm so chilly, yeah, my neck froze. Although many consider this song to be a meme, Pokemon music has been proving to be a popular choice for many hip-hop producers. To continue on the Nintendo trend, uh, Donkey Kong Country became to be one of the most beloved video games for both gamers and hip-hop producers, although for two very different reasons of course. The theme Aquatic Ambience, which is my favorite after Gamplank Galleon of course was famously sampled in Childish Gambino's track, Eat Your Vegetables. Although the sample isn't particularly noticeable, it definitely helps in creating an eerie and atmospheric ambience. Another great example of a rare game being sampled is in the track from the Six God himself, Drake. The track being called Six God. He uses the main melody of the haunted chase from Donkey Kong Country 2 to kind of really emphasize on the aggressiveness behind the message. I'll admit it, I'll admit it. Watch your mouth, song boy.
there are of course less obvious uses of video game samples. The biggest defender of this is of course my main man Lil Yachty with his track Run Running. Do you understand why there's always been a tumultuous relationship between copyright law and sampling? It's definitely a huge gray area. However, there is a worse offender of lazy video game sampling, and that's the god himself, Lil B. Lil B famously sampled the theme from B Set Island from Final Fantasy X in his track I Love You. Dum, dum, dum. Look, Lil B, I love you, man, but Square Enix probably doesn't love you at all. And finally, there are, of course, the small video game sound effects you hear throughout many hip-hop music. Everything from Toad's Scream and Mario Kart. <laughs> to Navi's incessant yell asking you to listen to her. to school kids' evil, childish laugh. <laughs> and again, toad scream of pain. Yeah! Man, producers really like the sound of toad suffering, huh? It is obvious now that without music, video games wouldn't be as influential or memorable and without video games hip-hop would probably lack some of the most iconic sounds and samples from its history but let me know what you think did i miss any other famous samples of video game music or sound effects in other hip-hop songs do you think it's fair for many of these artists to borrow some of these video game themes and use them for their music and remix them me personally, I think that the collaboration between the two mediums can create some very interesting sounding music. But let me know what you think. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Drew Fernie. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Every bit helps. Links to my socials are down below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at True Fernie. Ladies and gentlemen, please take care of each other. But most importantly, take care of yourself. Peace. Thank you.